Hello there, YouTubers. Kitten Hoarder here, and you're watching Session Report, the show that takes you to the gamer's table to share in the surprises that come out during play. And uh, for today's Session Report, we're going to be playing Mansions of Madness, Second Edition. Uh, this is going to be my second recorded playthrough of Mansions of Madness, Second Edition. Um, and I'm going to be trying a brand new scenario. And I actually put this up to a poll on... I spit on that a little bit, on Board Game Geek, um, and asking which scenario people would like to see filmed, and which characters they would like to see played. And the results surprised me a little bit. I was expecting a lot more people to want to see the um, scenarios that are based on the first edition components, uh, or the scenarios that come from the expansion, or maybe even the downloadable scenario. But the majority of the people actually voted for the scenarios in the original game. And the one that won out um, was Shattered Bonds, which is the third scenario. So I've already played a little bit of the Escape from Innsmouth scenario. Um, I haven't actually beaten it yet. It seems rather difficult with two. But I did play it with a friend. Quite enjoyed that one a lot better than the first scenario. So I'm hoping to get the same experience here. Um, so... Without further ado, uh, let's just get right into it. We don't need to explain any rules this time around, although I might need to uh, look up a few because it's been a while since I played. So, um, we're going to be playing Shattered Bonds, but before we do that, let's find the characters that were voted on by the viewers. Uh, first is Ashcan Pete, the Drifter, and let's hear about his backstory. Ashcan Pete. At night, Ashcan Pete sleeps wherever his travels take him. In a field, on a train, maybe if he's lucky in a barn. He bunks with his loyal hound dog, Nuke, on one side and his beat-up guitar on the other. And sometimes, when Ashcan Pete sleeps, he dreams. He dreams of haunted, tortured places and of horrible creatures. When he wakes up, he knows that someone needs his help because his dreams are true. He could not say how long he has been on the road, living by his wits, but he can say for certain no place is too far to go to help someone in need. And as long as Pete can help people, he is not likely to stop wandering anytime soon. So, there we go. Ashcan Pete. Um, his special ability is actually a card. He starts the game with this ally, Duke. And Duke is special because... At the start of your turn, you can perform a trade action as though you were within any space within range. Now that's really cool because trading is not just about giving items and taking items. Trading also involves dropping and picking up items. So, um, I believe range in this game is counted as uh, up to two spaces away. There might be three. Let me check that. Um, see, already checking the rules. Range... Um, three spaces away. Yeah. So any space up to three spaces away, he can pick up items from the, from the ground or he can drop them there. Um, or he can actually do an actual trade and that's a free action at the start of his turn. Then we have Rita Young, the athlete, uh, Rita Young story. Rita has always been good at running. Growing up in the South, she was well acquainted with discrimination and knowing when to make herself scarce. When she came up to Arkham to attend Mesquitonic University on a track and field scholarship, she found things had not changed as much as she had hoped. The creepy people chasing after her wore black robes, not white, but Rita ran all the same. When her roommate was attacked in the night while wearing Rita's jacket, I assume her letter jacket, uh, Rita decided to do something about it. She started looking into the matter and found that the mysterious assailants were not part of the Ku Klux Klan as she had assumed. Now Rita eagerly pursues any chance to investigate the unknown and hidden, cults that flourish right under the noses of the authorities. She is done running. Although she will not be done running because her special ability is when she moves, she gets to move an additional space every time, which is fantastic in this game because you got to cover a lot of ground. Okay, so those are the characters. Let's fire up the app and see what the story is. All right, 
Here we are on the app, Mansions of Madness 2nd Edition, and uh, let's start a new game. Okay, so we're going Shattered Bonds. After her return from a family vacation in the Southern Isles, Grace Beckman, a former associate, has begged for your help. Something terrible stalks the Beckman family. You must repair the Shattered Bonds that once protected the world and defend the Beckman family from their awful fate. This is a very high difficulty scenario, uh, the highest difficulty scenario uh, in the base set. And aside from one of the uh, first edition component scenarios, this is the highest difficulty one. Maybe that's why people wanted to see it. If you think that you're going to see me win this scenario, you've got another thing coming. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. If that's what they were hoping for, they're not going to be in luck. Let's select our characters. Ash can Pete. And we have Rita Young. All right. Ooh, lots of cool stuff. Each investigator begins with one clue. And we've got an Elder Sign Pendant. Whoops. Oops. An Elder Sign Pendant, a Flare Gun, a Kerosene Lantern, a Sledgehammer, the Tome of Horrors, and two spells, Instill Bravery and Shriveling. So let's check out these two spells, plus Duke, which I already gave to Ashcan Pete. All right. Instill Bravery. And Shriveling. Shriveling is a combat spell, I know. Instill Bravery looks like it's a healing horror spell. So... Let's look at these characters' stats and decide who should get what thing. So Rita has very high strength and agility. Observation and lore are middling. Influence is low. Will is fairly high. Um, if I remember correctly, lore and will are somewhat important for casting spells. Um, will is going to get you horror if you don't do well on your will checks. And uh, strength and agility are used in combat. So sh if sh there's a combat weapon, well, a heavy weapon probably goes to the person with the highest strength. So that's going to be Rita. She's got a sledgehammer with her. Um, the Elder Sign Pendant, roll one additional die while evading a monster. We're going to give that to Rita as well, since she is the mover of the group. Um, we want to make sure she can move whenever possible. Uh, let's see. A kerosene lantern. Discard this to convert all um, of the investigate symbol to a success while attacking unarmed. Well, you know who's unarmed? This guy. So we'll give him the kerosene lantern for now. Um... Tome of Horrors. When you suffer one or more horror while resolving a horror check, gain one clue. They have equal will, so that's not really going to matter. Ooh, their influence is low on both of them. That's not good. So we'll give the Tome of Horrors to Ashcan Pete over here. Um, the Instill Bravery spell? Let's give that to Ashcan Pete as well, since he might be taking horror. Um, we can then have him heal the horror. Uh, that means the shriveling would go to her, and she's already got a weapon. Uh, okay, so we'll switch this. She'll get the Tome of Horrors and Instill Bravery. He will get the shriveling spell. Shuffle those up. And a flare gun. That's pretty cool, and you can use it and then flip the card so there's a use on the back of it as well. That's going to be pretty nice. Okay, continue with the setup.
is absolutely necessary for the peace and safety of mankind that some of Earth's dark, dead corners and unplumbed depths be left alone, says H.P. Lovecraft in At the Mountains of Madness. You have never heard the respect of that planet before. She's usually so calm and collected. As your car barrels down the dirt road, you wonder what could frighten her enough to call you out to her isolated country estate. As you approach the turn to the property, your headlights go out and something strikes the side of your automobile with a sickening crunch. The vehicle veers off the road and crashes into the ditch. Oh no. Unable to get the car started again, you head out on foot and make your way through the woods towards Grace's home. The darkness presses in around you, and you get the uneasy feeling something is watching you from the trees. You emerge from the forest in front of the massive estate ringing the bell. It chimes loudly in the quiet night. Grace opens the door almost immediately. Quiet! It's a trap to the side. We've got to get out of here. Where's your car? As you break the news to her, Grace's expression changes to despair. Well, what are we going to do now? My entire family is here. And that, that creature, it's hunting us. A hunting creature? Hmm. Sounds horrific. Grace beckons you into the lobby of the estate. The dim electric lights flicker, casting ominous shadows across the room. Alright, so we need a lobby. Let me get this card that fell down. Whoop! Alright. We need a lobby tile. Hey, look at that. Right on top. Easy enough. And there are some walls that we're going to need to place. Let's put these wall tokens, they're going to be needed pretty often. Let's put them down here. Okay, so there are some walls right here and right here, rather than doors. As you step through the door, a strange wailing sound fills the room, and you hear a dull thudding and scraping echoing from the walls. You look nervously at each other. Place your investigator fingers, fingers, figures, as indicated. Here we go. Grace turns to you, her eyes wide and flashing in the dim light. I know you have dealt with this sort of thing before. There has to be something you can do to help my family. You have access to anything on my property if it can help save us. I'll be right here if you need me. Uh, got Grace Beckman, so we're going to need to find her person token. Well, there's Richard Beckman. I'm sure he's going to come into play. Um, Grace Beckman. She's purple. There she is. Grace Beckman. All right, she's going to be standing in here in the lobby whenever we need her. At the top of the stairs to the right, a table holds photographs of Grace's family. Okay, that might be worth looking at. Another small table in the corner at the top of the stairs, to the left, sits. <laughs> I missed that verb somewhere. There we go. To your right, the sound of a piano drifts from the doorway. Okay. That does not sound too dangerous. You notice a heavy shelf that you could use to barricade the door, should the need arise. Barricades. Where did I put the barricades? There's a barricade. There we go. The three other doors lead into the mansion. Yep. All right. So let me finish getting this set up. And then we can start our first investigator phase. Fun fun, fun, till daddy takes the T-bird away. All right, here we go. Okay, so I feel like one of us should ask Grace what the heck is going on, 
And since Rita is much better at moving around, I'm going to have Ashcan Pete, uh, the disheveled uh, drifter, talk to her. Neither of them is a good choice. I mean, he's a bum, basically. And she is a African-American lady, which at the time period is not um, particularly popular. Grace nervously fiddles with her green necklace as she greets you. I'm so sorry that calling you out here has got you stuck in this mess with us. We have to get out of this together. Uh, what's going on? Yeah, that sounds like a good option. Grace looks close to tears but keeps a calm demeanor. It started as a couple of weird occurrences here and there after we got back from vacation, but over days it got worse. The serving staff and my family say they have seen a monster. Most of the serving staff has quit, and members of my family have been attacked. Get a clue. All right. Um, I think she might have more to say. Grace looks at you expectantly. Things are getting worse by the minute. Have you found anything yet? How can I help? An old manuscript of mine should be in the basement. Could you find it and bring it to me? It would be invaluable in dealing with the creature. I'll keep my eye out for it. All right, that is Ashcan Pete's entire turn, believe it or not. And then it's time for Rita. And she, I mean, we heard that piano music. She's going to see what's going on in the other room. So she's going to start by moving. And as she moves, well, wait a second. Does it take any action to explore a new room? I think it does. Yeah, so she's going to actually just explore in this direction first. That's her first action. Sound of a piano drifts through the doorway. Through the doorway, a brightly lit ballroom takes up a large portion of the front of the house. The light from a large chandelier glints off the parquet floor. Discard this explore token and place the ballroom tile. Okay, so explore token is gone. We need to find the ballroom. The ballroom tile. There we go. And as indicated, there we are. Continue. A small girl sits on a bench of a grand piano, playing a somber melody from a piece of sheet music. She looks up at you. Hello, my name is Mildred. Who are you? Place a person token as indicated. This is Grace's daughter, Mildred. How cute. Mildred. There she is. Hello. Under the massive windows, a large table is set with a red tablecloth and a gorgeous arrangement of flowers. Across the ballroom, a door leads to another room. Alright, so we've explored. Hmm. I mean, I don't see what could be possibly interesting about this tablecloth. Um. But maybe we should stop and talk to Mildred. The problem is we'll have to move to get there. So let's move one space. Oh, we can't. Uh, we've already done an action. So we can't move and talk. We have to just move. Um, yeah. I do want to find out what Mildred has seen. Maybe she has some clues. So I'm just going to move into her space. And that's going to be it. So we're done. Um, end of the turn. Suddenly, the temperature drops and your breath mists in the air. The walls of the lobby shudder, shaking the chandelier that hangs over the staircase. You hear a low growl echoing through the room. The people in the lobby might be in danger. Uh, okay. So, first thing I'm going to do is Ashcan Pete 
Grace, you need to go to another room. Uh... Grace, go to the ballroom. Grace quickly makes her way to the ballroom. And then Ashcan Pete is going to explore this way. You can hear the clinking of silverware and muffled whispers. Yeah, let's see it. The mansion's dining room is a long room featuring a solid oak table lined with chairs. A swinging door leads into a kitchen. All right, dining room time. There we go. A cabinet against the wall holds something that catches your interest. It is a scribe's journal. From the kitchen, you hear the clinking of cooking utensils and look to see two men hurriedly shoving things in from the kitchen into a bag. What? Huh. And so we'll need another person token. This is from the generic ones. So where's the generic gray person token? Not that it really matters, but... Huh. Wait, that's not right. It's this one. This is... It looks... No. Darn it! <laughs> Okay, one of these is got to be the right token. There we go. Sort of a brownish. Looks gray on the app. On the other side of the kitchen, a single door leads deeper into the property. Okay. Now I notice... They didn't add any wall tokens there, but there's no explore token there. I, seems like there should be a wall there. All right. Um, that was his action, right? He told her to move, and then he moved into this room. So that means it's Rita's turn. Rita is going to talk to Millie. The girl sits slowly playing from her sheet music. She looks like she's been crying. As you approach, she looks away shyly. What's the matter, sweetheart? She continues looking away from you. Nothing is the matter. Uh, try to cheer her up to tell you what's wrong. So this is an influence test. My characters just suck at influence, but we're going to try it. One success. That's good. She looks at you for a brief moment, but then quickly goes back to sulking. Fine. Don't tell me what's wrong. Um, I don't want to waste my time trying to convince this girl. With the low influence my characters have, it's not going to be worth it. But I can't really... I can't explore again this turn. It seems like a waste, but I'm just going to move over here so that I can explore as my first action next turn. Yeah. So, that is it. Lights flicker, and for an instant, shadows that were cast by nothing on this earth stalk across the wall. Well, that's ominous. Okay, um, let's begin with Rita, and she's going to explore into the next room. Brass plate with the word library is fastened to the center of this door. Yeah, let's explore. 
As your eyes adjust to the dim light of the small room, you see the walls are lined with shelves of books. It's a library. No doy. There we go. Library. And this one does have a wall token down here. It appears that someone was reading in the far corner of the room recently and has left a couple of books open on the floor. Place a search token as indicated. Several books sit on the writing desk beside an item that might be of use. It's a razor. Yeah, it could be of use. The corner of the rug has been pulled back, revealing a trap door on the floor. Oh dear. Excellent. Um, I'm going to keep going with this, and I'm going to explore this trap door. The corner of the rug has been pulled back, revealing a trap door in the floor. You open the trap door to discover a dark passage that winds under the floor. Because we're trying to find the basement, remember? You lower yourself into the passage, follow it a short distance, and climb a ladder, leading to another room of the mansion. Secret passage. So, this is a secret passage now. You peer into a sizable room that dominates most of the second floor. The room is full of comfortable looking leather furniture and lamps for reading. Place the lounge tile as indicated. Okay. We're using all the big rooms, aren't we? Is that a lounge? That's the lounge. Okay. Like so, I believe. An elderly man sitting amidst piles of books jumps at the sight of you. Heavens, you startled me! He idly tucks a green necklace back into his shirt. That's suspicious. As he regains his composure. Uh, this is Richard, Grace's father-in-law. I already saw Richard. He's over here. And he's on the couch. The corner of the lounge, a small door leads into a side room. Yep, we know that. A door across the room leads to the remainder of the upper level of the mansion. Place an explore token is indicated. All right, we're gonna have to move all this stuff down, it looks like. Pull yourself up into the room, careful to close the trapdoor behind you. We need another trapdoor. There's the other trapdoor. Alright, so this is where it leads. Alright, that was it. That was two actions from Rita. Um, and then I believe that Ashcan Pete has not gone yet. So he's going to try to move into the kitchen here. Um, I think actually he wants to pick up that scribe's journal. So, oh, at the start of his turn, he can perform a trade action as though he were with in any space within range. So that's perfect. He's going to pick up the scri Scribe's Journal using his free trade action from Duke. 
And then he's going to move into the kitchen. Now, I believe that this solid line indicates a door, and the dotted line indicates an impassable barrier. Now, I'm pretty sure that's an interior door there. So he's going to go one, two, and that's just one action. And then he's going to talk. Two men wearing smudged aprons argue in quiet whispers as they shove cooking utensils into a worn canvas bag. What are you doing? The two men look up, noticing you for the first time. First man speaks up. What does it look like? We're packing up our things and leaving before that thing gets us. Second man nods in agreement. It was in the same room as us. It looked right at us, but then went after the Beckmans instead. We might not get that lucky again. I can say, good luck, friends. Why do you think it ignored you or cowards? Cowards. The man's, men's faces flash with anger, and the younger one lunges at you, swinging a curled fist. You try to talk him down. Oh, no, this is not a good idea. Influence. Zero successes. I'm not going to waste a clue. He ignores your words, and his fist connects hard and sends you sprawling across the kitchen floor. Suffer two damage. With a scoff, the men... Uh, let me take my two damage. Suffer two damage, I believe, always means face up, unless indicated otherwise. So, only a flesh wound. And another flesh wound. Perfect. With a scoff, the men throw the bags over their shoulders. We'll see how confident you are when you come face to face with it. With a final glance over the kitchen, they hurry out the door, leaving some of their things behind. Gain the meat cleaver, common item. Well, at least I have a weapon now. A meat cleaver. Perfect. Oh, boy. Lovely. And that was his turn, so it's time to go to the monster phase. A loose, fluttering page covered in barely legible text caches Pete's eye. Unable to resist, he reads. Uh, he suffers two face-down horror, his lore negates, and then he flips one horror face up. So let's see how much this horror we can negate. All of it. Just reading about horrible, horrific, and awful things does not faze me. The shadows in the lobby come alive. Writhing tentacles of darkness burst from every corner and come together to form a beast that looms over the entire room. Each investigator in the lobby suffers two horror, willpower negates, and investigator in the lobby must fight the creature. No investigators in that room. The monster stalks around the empty room, unleashes an angry howl that shakes the walls of the mansion, and then melds back into the shadows to continue stalking its prey. Each investigator suffers one face-down horror. I assume that means each investigator everywhere, so we're taking a face-down horror. Uh, I guess Rita will take hers over there. Let's see if we can we can shift all of this over a little bit, probably. There we go. And then Rita can take her horror and damage and stuff over there. The creature seems to be hunting the Beckmans. You have to keep them alive long enough to find a way to draw out the beast. Keecher seems to be responding to the sounds being made around the mansion. You could probably attract it to be specific rooms by making loud noises there. In the ballroom, a grand piano sitting on the dance floor could likely be used to attract the monster there. Interesting. On an end table in the corner of the lounge, a bell normally used to summon servants could likely be used to attract the monster there. An otherworldly wail emanates from the walls of the mansion, and in response to its master's call, a horrifying creature, oh no, crashes through one of the ballroom windows. Spawn of Bayaki is indicated. Oh no, 
I'm going to have to get a Bayaki. Okay, so the Bayaki bursts through the window. It scared um, Grace Beckman um, away, and she's ran up to the attic. And then Mildred ran into the lounge, and then the Bayaki is flying after um, the nearest investigator uh, in range, which is actually Rita. She's the only investigator in range. So one, two, three, and one, two, three, because of the secret passage, one, two, three, it can move into Rita's space. So it's going to attack Rita. The Bayaki grabs you with its claws, attempting to drag you away. It's a strength test, so I have five dice for this, and I need two successes. Easy. Yes. You hold your ground and push the beast away. Okay. Each investigator must resolve a horror check against the monster within range with the highest horror rating. After all horror checks have been resolved, tap the end phase button to continue. So, a horror check. Rita's going to have to do one. Uh... Okay, Rita, resolve a horror check. Bayaki lets out an ear-splitting shriek. Suffer one horror negated by willpower minus one. So she's rolling three dice to negate this one horror. Should be easy. Yep. You don't scare me, you flying fuck! <laughs> and that is the end of the mythos phase. Alright, Rita has a problem. She needs to kill this Bayaki. Luckily, she has a massive sledgehammer. Um, so she's going to use it. She's going to attack the Bayaki with the sledgehammer. So where's my monsters? Bayaki, attack with a heavy weapon. You dodge behind the creature and swing your weapon where you hope a spine would be. Roll in five dices. Got three successes. You slam into the back of the creature, and it lurches forward. The Bayaki suffers damage equal to the weapon's damage plus your test result. Well, the weapon's damage is two. Test result was one, two, three. That Bayaki is suffering five damage. Perfect. I'm going to attack it again. heavy weapon. You bring your weapon down, attempting to crush any monstrous appendage within reach. Five strength again. Oh, she is good. Two. Yeah, I got it. Your swing connects, and the gruesome noise of the impact makes your stomach turn. The monster suffers damage equal to the weapon's damage, plus your test result. That's another four damage. It is dead. Alright. So that took her whole turn, but... We killed that Bayaki pretty dead. Which means, hopefully, the people in this room are safe. Um, now, it's Ashcan Pete's turn. And he could attempt to go all the way back here and play the piano. But I think he's going to keep exploring this part of the mansion. Um, and maybe find something else to distract it with. So he's going to go one and explore, and he's got another movement after this. A door at the back of the kitchen leads deeper into the ground floor. The door leads to a tight hallway tucked behind the kitchen. Um, it's the interior hall tile. That's it. That was easy. And there's a wall here as well. So the wall is right over here. Ah, it's another wall. It's this wall. Along one side of the hallway, two doors lead to bedrooms for the serving staff. At the end of the hall, you see a door marked Cellar. 
cellar. Uh, no, we wanted to go to the basement, I think. But hey, maybe the cellar and the basement are connected. Who knows? A heavy desk stands against the wall by the door. Another barricade. Okay. So I move one space into the explored room, and I'm going to move another space. And that's uh, ending my turn. Ugh. I'm running out of room again. Okay. All right, Mythos. The lights flicker then die. Place darkness in each space in the interior hall. This Mythos effect uh, event affects each investigator in the interior hall. Okay, we got darkness here. Darkness here and a darkness here. The sudden darkness is overwhelming. You find yourself completely blind. Willpower. Willpower, willpower. I got four dice. I just need one success. This should be easy. Yep, one success. You force yourself to press on, using your memory of the room to navigate. Oh, good. Okay. So while I'm here, uh, oh, I need to put a token here to represent the bell. Okay. While I'm here, I think I'm going to use Ashcan's. Can I keep exploring up north? Okay, so Ashcan is going to spend his first action to explore here. Brass plate set into the wooden door said cellar. Cool air meets you as you peer into the dim basement of the mansion. Boxes and old furniture are stacked around a massive furnace. Basement tile. Basement? Basement? Yes, that's the basement. Okay. Oh dear. I'm gonna have to move some stuff around for now, temporarily. Oh dear. No, I need even more room. Okay, what are we gonna do? Um, move everybody down as low as they can possibly get. There goes one of my dice. That is the annoying thing about this game, isn't it? It's not a small game. And I have this, I mean, obviously it's not the biggest gaming table in the world, but it is not a small table. And I have consistently had difficulty keeping everything on the table when playing this game. Hi, puppy. All right, so, and then this goes there, so all of this stuff's getting moved. I mean, there doesn't seem to be anything over beyond this part of the map, so we will put those things over here. And... There we go. And a wall. <laughs> Out of place in the dingy basement, a woman in a black and white dress is digging through the boxes, looking for something. This is Edna the nanny. All right, where's Edna? Edna the nanny. Edna. The giant metal furnace looms over the basement. Hitting the hollow metal with something could attract the creature here. That's what we want. Good. A box sits open with several items inside. Place the arcane manuscript. That's another thing we wanted, I think. I thought she said it was in the basement. Wait, we're in the basement. Oh, cellar, basement. Okay, they're using them interchangeably. 
Um, arcane manuscript that should be in the A's. Hey, puppy. All right. A small square door of a dumbwaiter set into the wall. All right, let us move one space into the explored area. So, yeah, darkness just means I can't spend clues. So, I think it's very important that I get in a position to make some noise. Um, these interact tokens, what does it say? Um, I think I have to be in that space to interact with it. So I'm going to move one and then two, and then I'm going to end my turn here. And I can bang on the furnace next turn. All right. Then we have Rita. Um, I think Rita is going to just continue exploring. She's got a, an okay weapon. She doesn't need that razor blade. Um, so she's going to go, I think she's going to explore upward to the north. So she's going to go one space here, explore, and continue from there. Leads to the upper level's main hall. Yep. You find a long hallway, yep, that stretches through the upper level of the mansion. A large staircase leads from the lobby to the second floor hall. Place the hall stairs, hall end, and hall corner, two tiles, and a wall, as indicated. Okay. Gonna have to find those tiles. Okay. Hall. Oh, this is the wrong hall. Okay, hall end, yes, hall end, hall two, yes, hall stairs, no, hall corner two, and hall stairs. There's hall stairs, hall corner two, and we're taking hall two back. All right, so she's got two more movement because she moved one space to get there. And remember, she gets an extra space of movement every time she moves. And we want this tile here. But there's a wall right there. And then I'm assuming this hall corner goes here. So, ah, there we go. And then the stairs are here. So, we've explored a fair bit of the mansion now. That means this, I assume, is gone. A wretched groaning noise echoes down the length of the hallway. A dark shadow that seems to be just a trick of the light moves along the walls. But as it flies out of sight down the hallway, you hear the crash of a table hitting the floor. Then the shadow fades, leaving the hallway quiet and still. Interesting. At the top of the stairs, a locked secretary desk sits against the wall. Several doors to other rooms in the house line the hall, of course. So we have even more explore tokens. Lovely. One up here, one over here, and one down here. The surrounding furniture could be used to barricade a door. Okie dokie. Barricade here, which I guess could only be used on that door because you can't move it out of your space. 
And we're moving one space into the explored room. Um, you know, I really want to investigate this disturbance in the hallway. I want to investigate over here. So I'm going to end my turn there. Even though I could move further. And that is it for Rita Young. We're going to go to the Mythos phase, and then we'll probably... That'll be it for t today. The door begins rattling and shaking as if someone or something on the other side is trying to get through. This Mythos event affects the investigator in a space with the door who has suffered the most horror. Uh, that is equal, so I think that... Players break ties. Um, probably there is no probably no list for ties. Uh, I'm just gonna say players break ties. So, uh, well, actually, he doesn't have a door in his space, so that's gonna be Rita. Door suddenly flies open. Agility two. Her agility is four, so. Ooh, dear. Uh-uh. No successes. She can't make clues. Um, I mean, she doesn't have enough clues to turn them into successes. So, the door slams hard into your face and limbs. Suffer one damage and become dazed. So, let's see what damage she's gotten. Oh, it's only a flesh wound. Okay. But she does become dazed. The dazed condition... I mean, she cannot spend clues on her next turn. The air in the basement becomes chill. A shape begins flitting from shadow to shadow in the dim room. The people in the basement might be in danger. Uh-oh. Okay, I need to get the maid out of there. I know I said I was going to bang on that thing, but I got to get the maid out of there. Um, oh dear. Oh dear. 